When I was watching Rumblefish, and I was thinking of other things that had happened to you in terms of preparing, mm -hmm. and Tony Bill saying to you one day on My Bodyguard that he wanted you to spend a whole day staying in character, so you got to be mean to a lot of people at an airport. Oh, yeah. Then there was that extraordinary incident that was done to you during the filming of The Outsiders, where Coppola had a hidden camera across the street, and you had to go into a store oh, yeah, and steal yeah, a package yeah. of cigarettes. Yeah. What happened, Matt? Yeah, what we did, that was Outsiders. We were doing the rehearsal things on video camera. Um, and uh, we were doing the rehearsal there. And it was sort of raw at that time, I think. I mean, because we had, it was like the, f the first day we were going out to rehearse. It was like the f I had just arrived. And we were doing sort of location. We get a little crew and we go around with the video camera. And uh, we wanted to, uh, yeah, I mean, we were shooting everywhere. We'd go into, we said, let's go in and have a cup of coffee. And me and the other two actors, uh, Tom Howell and uh, Ralph Macchio. We were just sitting there having coffee, talking to Francis. And all of a sudden, let's get the camera in here. We brought the camera in. Francis stepped out. And uh, we just started doing things in character. What are we going to do tonight? And just the whole attitude, you know. Um, it was a lot of fun, even though it was rough. That time it was really fun because we actually went on location. We went into the, OK, we took the camera, put it outside. Um, so Francis, OK. Let's go in, I want you to go in, and I want you to actually steal the cigarettes. And I was like, I love the idea of doing it. Great, you know. So we go in there, and uh, I actually went behind the counter without them seeing me, stole the cigarettes, and walked out and took off down the street. Then afterwards, after they cut, I went back and returned them. The Didn't lady, Francis make and the lady right? was upset. The woman was upset, and she said, we got a thief in here, blah, blah, blah. And I had just, then we just left and we went to another location. I love you. Is there more comfort now with the success for you? Well, I think it, it, comfort is a question unto itself. I mean, whether you're successful is one thing, but if you're comfortable anyway, you know, it's, it's hard for people to identify with success. They will sabotage themselves repeatedly before they'll give in to success. And I had, I had that problem. I felt like, oh, this can't be real. And also, just growing up is a process anyway. I mean, I'm an only child. I didn't have a lot to draw on in terms of my peers. Um, I always was around adults and trying to be that so hard. I always be older. I mean, even when I was six and I auditioned for my first play, I lied and said I was seven. You know, I always wanted to be older. And uh, now I don't have to. I mean, I'm, I'm an adult, I suppose, in the law. I'm 18. And um, I finally got my own place. And I'm, I'm just growing into myself anyway. And that touches every part of my life, and uh, including my career, you know, which has been ongoing. I mean, 13 films in five years, and that's a good bulk of work and uh, I feel good about it in general mostly because I feel good about myself today. Tomorrow I might have problems <laughs> but today fortunately I, I feel good about things. You know? But Diane when you say something like I work so hard mm -hmm. to have a typical good time for someone my age that sometimes I feel desperate. Is that fair or am I throwing back something you didn't say or that was out of context? Oh, it was probably the words were in a sentence that was rambling and they put it together. Um, yeah, sometimes I felt pretty desperate because I knew that it was coming to me. I could feel it. Um, success or where people begin to associate the name with my face and go, oh, weren't you in something I saw? Didn't you do a commercial? You know, I mean, it doesn't really matter what, what it is they think they know me from. But And uh, I began to think, well, maybe I won't be able to be a people watcher and just go around with my friends and, and and be a normal person and go to rock concerts and it's scheduling my time as a teenager was really hard uh, and, I, and I felt it took effort to sit in a room with my friends from school and sit there and think about all the work that I've done and not being able to talk to them about it because maybe they think I'm a snob or, or, or they would, you know what I'm saying, they would think things about me that weren't necessarily true just because of the experience. Steve has been described as the only good 
kid in Rumblefish. I should point out, because we'll be looking at scenes from Rumblefish, that you don't look quite the same. No, a little, little, there's a little deviation. Now, did, did, when they asked you to play Steve, and you found out how Steve was going to look, did you just mm -hmm. say, I'm an actor, I'll dye my hair, I'll bleach well, no, no, from whatever? No, no, no. This was, this was all, the, there was, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. I, I made those choices. When I, when, for, see, I tried out for the Outsiders, and uh, I was offered something, but I wanted to do Baby 2 instead, because I felt better, it was better for me. So, when I got to Tulsa, I had not auditioned for a Rumblefish. Francis just said, hey, Vinny, I want you to do this, and come on and give it a try. And so I went, and I said, what am I going to do with this guy now? What am I going to, how am I going to become this guy, Steve? And the, f the first thing was the fact that he is a lighter presence in the film. He is a strong contrast to the other characters. He is a good kid. He's also hope. He's, he's also a, a brightness, a hope. He's going to make it. And he's like the one who's recording all this. He's going to like... He's going to be, when all these guys are dead, he's going to have the story, you know. He's going to talk about his fascination with these guys and that he really knew guys like this. So the glasses were a part of, um, they're actually in the book, but that's no guarantee they'll be used in the film. But I figured Steve reads a lot. He reads too much, you know, and uh, he, he doesn't, you know, play sports or anything. That was another thing, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything athletic, really, you know, which is something that I miss. Uh, because Steve just isn't into athletics. He's just too busy. He doesn't need on the girls, you know. So uh, this was all part of creating Steve. Doug Claiborne is co-producer. Why, why co? Uh, term in the business, it means that Fred, Roos, and I produced the film together, uh, you know, in close collaboration. Francis Coppola, or Francis Ford Coppola, is the executive producer of the film. It was his project. He was also the director of the film. But to, to answer your question, it, it just means that we produce the film at the same time together, as opposed to produced by and, and different uh, line producer or uh, other kinds of relationships. Fred and I did it together in, in close collaboration. I have a feeling, being aware of Fred Roos and his background mm -hmm. and his credits, meeting you for the first mm -hmm. time and reading about you, I kept thinking of film experiences I had during the time that I worked for a company called Janus Films. Oh, great. And I looked at a lot of movies, and sitting through Rumblefish, mm -hmm. and being aware of the fact that it is, in a complimentary way, what one would call an art film, mm -hmm. that you may have a lot to do. I'm not forgetting, is it Dean Tavalaris? Dean Tavalaris. Tavalaris. Right, a production designer. But your background, and all the time spent studying art, being an artist, that maybe that camera work and maybe this feeling of looking at several kinds of cinema as opposed to movie making mm -hmm. has a lot to do with you. Am I wrong? Well, uh, I try to, uh, I like to give all the creative credit of the film to Francis Coppola. He's the director, he was the guy that really visualized the film beforehand. He's the man that's, that really saw the vision. Stephen Burem, that worked very close with, the, with Francis, the cinematographer, had the the photographic view of the film. Uh, Dean Tavalaris, the production designer, had, you know, the kind of art uh, concept, the design, the windows, the light, the shadows. So I would like to think that my participation in it was one of support and that my art background, being a painter, being a designer, commercialist, illustrator, art director, that that came out not in me saying, gee, Francis, we should have the thing on the wall, but more in a supportive way.